understand why skilled people like you come and mess about with the float, which is a bit of a dirty float, yeah. and holding all the cards in you know, the right way that no one else can see, we can do at least as well as a lot of the speculators that are wrecking havoc with our export production. And the other thing that should be able to control the New Zealand inflation that has never been used to any great extent is to turn the tap off and inflation when the property uh, house bubble is, is booming, instead of just screwing the interest rates and screwing the currency and screwing the exports. Yeah, okay, so I don't disagree with you, there's a fair bit of frustration there, and New Zealand dollar is very volatile. Um, some of you may have seen a while ago, I'm trying to be clever, but um, there was a, there's an article that was written in the Wall Street Journal about me, they came, they sent their editor down to interview me about what was the right response to the global economy, because we, in recessions in one sense, we're not going necessarily for the really big bang approach that you saw in countries like you know, Sydney, Australia, but very much in the United States and others. Um, we, we've got a series of initiatives that we continue to run through. We're pretty still in the tree still. You know, we're actually borrowing 7.7 .7 billion to make sure we provide all the services we want and the likes this year alone. Um, but my view was a really big bang approach, you might not get the results that you want and you certainly incur a hell of a lot of debt that you've eventually got to pay back. But one of the things I said in that article was, um, the United States is borrowing so much, I mean, the, the government put it in perspective, our, our current um, operating deficit is probably about 3, three odd percent of GDP, they're at 9.4 I think from memory. It's colossal, I mean, debt to GDP in New Zealand is currently 23%. At the, if by 2023, if, if it all goes to custard and it's, and it's tough economic times and all the rest of it, our debt will probably top out at 43% and start coming back down. Uh, in the United States, the OECD think by 2012 they'll owe 100% of GDP. And these are colossal amounts of borrowing. So one of the things I said in that article is, in my view, the Americans are going to start printing money and they're going to start doing it quite soon. And that will have implications for our exchange rate. And actually, that's exactly what they did. That's what quantitative easing is. And it's basically devaluing their currency and sending our currency up. And that's why we're sitting at 65 cents, um, or that sort of number, 64 odd cents. So you're right. I, mean, I, worry, I do worry about the exchange rate and its impact on farmers. And I worry about the volatilities for all the exporters simply because I think you can cope if you can understand what you're dealing with. But the problem is when it's moving around all over the show, it makes it difficult. So this, this is the challenge, I suppose, and that is there have now been three reviews, and those reviews um, of the effectively monetary policy and whether it's working have included international experts that have come out now, two governors of the Reserve Bank, both Don and Alan Bullard. None of them have really been able to come up with a better system. Um, so, and you know, if you have a look at if you have a look at it, it's there are frustrations there. I'll give you one example of that frustration that Alan Bollard must feel. And that is when it, when inflation was rising, he was trying to choke off the housing market that you talked about. He essentially raised interest rates. So we got up to a base rate, you know, OCR of eight and a quarter percent. And actually that was why we went into recession before these other countries. It was very mild, minus point one and minus point two, all this sort of stuff. But we've been in it for five quarters, but it was driven off the fact that not the global market so much but the domestic interest rates. But for a large period of time, there was so much cheap money floating around overseas, it's so easy to do those bond issues, and we borrow so much from overseas. The banks almost just went around the Reserve Bank and just borrowed on the international markets, lent it in New Zealand and bought it in cash rate. You've actually got a little bit of that going on at the moment, where in the long end, yes, interest rates have come down more than they have in other countries as Alan Bollard's cut rates to 2.5%. But, um, what you go and have a look and see what you can get if you put, go and put your money in the bank at the moment. The banks are paying you 4% plus. So it's kind of like a, when, when he's trying to choke demand off, it's not working terribly brilliantly because they're going around and it works but slowly. And equally on the downside, he's got a bit of it. So there's a bit of frustration there. My only caution is if you change the system and you went to some other sort of duty float or managed float or something like that, there's no free lunch there. You know, it has big implications for your um, for your reserves. Uh, you've got to assume you can get it better, get it right, more right than the market. There's a lot of challenges in there, and you know, I think our preference would be to continue with where we're at. Uh, but we'll see to the governor, hey, if there are better ways of doing it. But I just want to make one other comment and the final point, which is in relation to capital gains, which is really important around housing. 
You're right, actually, there's been a huge amount of consumption, debt-based consumption, based on rising house prices. So basically, in the last five years, what people did was they went out, they used their mortgage as a floating facility, wandered into their bank, drew down some cash because their house prices had gone up, interest rates were coming down so they could service more debt, and now that music stopped, they're left with a huge amount of debt, um, arguably reducing income and a uh, problem. The question I guess I'd pose for you is, would a capital gains tax fix that? And there's a really a mixture of views. You know, John Whitehead, who's the Secretary of the Treasury, thinks it would. Robin Oliver, who's the Chief Policy Advisor for IRD, thinks it won't. Um, there's some in our courts that might think it would. I'm of the view that it wouldn't. And I've just never been a great supporter of capital gains taxes. And the reason is I think um, they're, they're very difficult to administer. They're complex and they don't raise you a lot of money. And in the end, they force you to stay with an asset because you don't want to change because once you crystallise the asset, you've got to pay your capital gains tax, so they're inefficient. And actually, if you look to the United States, the United Kingdom and Australia, they all have a capital gains tax and they all had the property boom we had. So I'm just not sure that they would fix the problem that we all think that they would. Um, but you know, we've got a so tax task force looking at these things and as there is in Australia and I'm sure they'll come up some recommendations but I'm just not convinced of the nature. What about using immigration to control the booms when they come? <coughs> yeah, well I'll tell you one thing about immigration and that's the thing that's helping out our economy, will help out our economy. Net migration is rising, partly because a lot less people are going to Australia, so that's a good part of the story because they're staying in New Zealand. And the second thing is people are coming home or people are coming in through the immigration tax. Don Rashel used to say to me, when he was Reserve Bank Governor actually, the single biggest thing he used to look at for inflation and stimulation for the economy was net migration. More than anything else, because when people come to a country, providing you bring the right people in, uh, they have skills, they're going to go and work, they'll create entrepreneurial enterprises, they'll buy houses and they'll buy white goods. So I think um, the rise of net migration is an important part of the New Zealand story, yeah, providing it's not challenging our employment markets. And I'm actually pretty confident we can get that balance right by making sure we bring in the right people with the right skills, with the right capital to make a difference. Thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, the Prime Minister for our second longer. Can I get Leon for total span to come up, um, please, and for the, uh, the prize uh, with the Prime Minister? So, we have a biosecurity bio check. Quattro, uh, Scalera, Quattro. <laughs> Some numbers in it. We might get the government. And so, the uh, surprise is a three by three total span share for my winner. Because I'm not that fond of getting the boot. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so the lucky number is 1061. Oh, 1061. <laughs> Thank you.